Welcome back to lecture 46, everyone. Uh, we're talking about the Funnel Theorem Calculus Part 1. And uh, I wanted to look at two more examples of using the Funnel Theorem of Calculus Part 1 to help us calculate derivatives of integrals. In particular, we've seen before that the Funnel Theorem Calculus Part 1 tells us that if we take the derivative with respect to x of the integral function a to x, f of t dt, that this is simply just equal to f of x right here. Now, in order to use this result, we do have to have, there's a constant a at the bottom of the integral, and there has to be some variable x that's at the top of the integral right there. And so that's almost the setting we're in right now. We do have this constant one that's on the bottom, but we have this function x to the fourth uh, that sits on top right there. And how do we compensate for this function x to the fourth as opposed to a variable? And the answer to that question is we are gonna use the chain rule. If we think of the fundamental theorem of calculus part one as a derivative rule, we can combine it with other derivative rules like the chain rule. And so we're gonna decompose this function in the following way. Uh, so we need to take the derivative of two functions. Uh, well, two functions that are composed with each other. What are those two functions gonna be? Well, we have an outer function, which we're gonna integrate from one to u, this uh, secant, t dt, and so this will represent our outer function. And then we're gonna put inside of it an inner function. That inner function is the function x to the fourth. This is our inner function right here. And you'll notice that if you take x to the fourth and you plug it in for u, this will recapture the original function we have right here. And so we wanna take the derivative using this chain rule. Well, because of the decomposition here, uh, we're going to take the derivative with respect to x to the fourth, this outer function, 1 uh, x to the fourth, secant t dt. But then by the chain rule, we have to multiply by the inner derivative as well. We have to take the derivative with respect to x, uh, this function x to the fourth. And so that right there is a fairly painless uh, compensation to do for these, uh, for these type of FTC type problems. So we're going to have, when we take the derivative... So, so starting this thing over again, when we take the derivative of the integral from one to x to the fourth secant t dt, uh, by the chain rule, we're gonna take the derivative of the function, of the outer function with respect to x to the fourth. This will give us secant of x to the fourth, right? So this is our outer derivative. You basically could just get the inside function, secant, but you have to make sure you insert inside of it the upper limit of the integral. Uh, of the integral, right? And then you times it by the inner derivative, x to the fourth prime. This is your inner derivative right here. In which case, then your final answer looks like 4x cubed, that's the derivative of x to the fourth, times secant of x to the fourth. And so if your upper limit is not x, it's not a variable, it's a little bit more complicated than that, it doesn't change the calculation too much. What you'll do is you'll just take the, you'll just take the inside function, that, 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 that's function that is inside the integral, the integrand, make sure you plug the upper limit into the function. So we're gonna plug secant the fourth inside for t, but then you have to make sure you take the derivative of that inner function as well. Uh, let's look at another example of this one. This is a little bit more complicated. Um, you'll see that in this situation, we're taking the derivative of the integral that ranges from cosine of x to sine of x of the natural log of 1 plus 2x here. You'll see that the lower limit is the function cosine of x, and the upper limit is the function sine of x. How does one deal with this? This right here kind of represents the worst case scenario you get when you start taking derivatives of integral functions. So remember, for FTC, we need to have a low, we need the lower limit to be a constant and the upper limit to be a variable, or in this case, a function. So first, what I want us to do is break it up into two integrals. So we're going to take the derivative of two pieces. We're going to insert some middle number into this expression. So we can do this in the following way. We're going to take the integral of cosine of x to 0. Pick your favorite number. 0 is typically a good choice here. Take the, take the integral from cosine of x to 0 of the natural log of 1 plus 2t dt and add it to the integral from 0 to sine of x, the natural log of 1 plus 2t. So we broke this up into two integrals. And, in, and you'll notice that we took this intermediate value 0 that sits somewhere in there. Again, it doesn't matter what number you choose. Just to pick a constant right here. I usually like to pick 0 
uh, so that the forthcoming arithmetic's a little bit easier if if there is any. Uh, but don't worry about that too much. Just break it up into two pieces. Because to apply FTC1, you need a constant on the bottom and you need, a, you need a function on top. That's the setting that the second integral is in right now. Um, the first integral is not quite there. The zero is in the wrong spot. So flop those things around. Uh, you'll end up with the derivative ddx of the integral. You're going to get the integral from zero to sine of x. Natural log of one plus two t dt. And then you get minus the integral from zero to cosine of x natural log of one plus two t. So using some properties of integrals, we are able to turn this into a problem similar to the previous one we just saw. We can take the two derivatives separately. So we need to take, so taking our integral zero to sine of x natural log of one plus two t dt, we're gonna take the derivative of that with respect to x and then subtract from that the integral zero to cosine of x natural log of 1 plus 2t dt. Don't forget the differential there. We need to take the derivative of that as well. So but by derivative rules, we can take the derivative of these uh, both parts. Well, like we saw in the previous example, when the upper bound is a function, by the chain rule, we're going to plug that function in for t, but we have to make sure we also take the derivative of sine. Uh, so we're going to end up with the natural log of 1 plus 2 times sine of x, and then we have to take the derivative of sine of x. And then we subtract from this, again, by the chain rule with associated to FTC1, we plug the upper limit in for the function. So we get the natural log of 1 plus 2 cosine of x. And then we take the derivative of cosine. And so upon doing that, the derivative of sine is a cosine. Uh, so we end up, for the first one, cosine of x times the natural log of 1 plus 2 sine of x, like so. And then the derivative of cosine is a negative sign, so we're going to get a negative negative, which is a positive sine x times the natural log of 1 plus 2 cosine of x. And I'm going to leave the final answer as that. I don't think there's really much simplification uh, we're going to do beyond this point right here. But we can see this kind of represents the worst case scenario when it comes to taking uh, derivatives of integral functions. Make sure that if you have a constant on the bottom, whenever you, whenever you take an integral, a derivative of an integral, make sure there's constant on the bottom and what, whatever's on the top gets plugged in for x. And don't forget your inner derivatives, right? Um, that's all that we need to see. And that's it. The Funnel Theorem Calculus Part 1 is, is pretty nice. It helps us calculate derivatives of these area functions. Uh, we'll talk about the Funnel Theorem Calculus Part 2 in our next lecture, 47. Stay tuned for that. Um, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments below. Um, I will respond to them in a timely manner and love to answer anyone's questions you might have about these videos, what have you. Um, if you like these videos, please click like and subscribe if you want to see some more in the future. I will see you next time, everyone. Bye.